What are you willing to do to get us to the combo? What are you willing to do to get us a district championship? How bad do you want it? You're 32 minutes away from something not very many people in this area would have thought you can do. We have to be the more physical team tonight. The more aggressive team wins tonight. Plain and simple. I guarantee you, yeah, he's going to be challenging them. Yes. And, and they're they're going to give you your, their best effort here in a second. I promise. They will not lay down. They're going to make it run. You gotta... But it starts right here. It starts with having a little bit of toughness about you.
those guys are great young men and they're great leaders and they, they're leaving a legacy with John Glenn basketball. I am so proud of you guys. From day one to where you guys have grown to right now, it is really it's remarkable. You know, everyone thought it was going to happen last year, but you saw what happened. But you know what? Guess what? You're the group. You're the group to get there. It's been since 2007. Be proud of yourself because it's not easy to get here. Hell of a job. Good job, guys. Yes. Heating and cooling. Alan Hunter, State Farm, and Park Man. AVC Sports presents High School Basketball. Tonight's game is brought to you by Don Ford, Patriots, Buckeye Mutual Insurance, WB Green Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, Valentine Insurance, Federal Elite, Heating and Cooling, Alan Hunter, State Farm, and Park National Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, did you miss us? Hasn't been long. We were on the air just about, what, 20 minutes ago. Uh, we are back at the Convo in Athens, Ohio, now getting prepared for the tip-off of the second game, the regional semifinal between the Fairfield Union Falcons and the Tri-Valley Scotties. Bill Kassler, Dave Hilliard with you here. And, Dave, this matchup right here, uh, it ought to be a good one tonight. Falcons are a big team. Uh, they uh, have a lot of talent, uh, but uh, one of the teams that uh, beat them for their two losses this year is this Tri-Valley Scottish team that's on the floor right now. Well, we've got a rematch here in this second game from our regionals here at, at the Convo in Athens. Fairfield Union 23-3 on the season. Tri-Valley 19-7. And, and as Bill mentioned, one of those losses for the Fairfield Union Falcons came at the hands of Tri-Valley, which was you know, a tightly contested basketball game. Uh, ended up Tri-Valley beat Fairfield Union back on January the 19th, 54 to 49. And it's one of those, um, the Fairfield Union players have kind of, they've talked about wanting the rematch here with Tri-Valley. So uh, it should be a very close basketball game. I mean, two very comparable teams. Um, Fairfield Union with some good size inside. Same with Tri-Valley. Tri-Valley, I thought that the strength that their team has been all year has been how physical they've been. So uh, some players to look at tonight for us, Bill, and for Fairfield Union, Caleb Schmelzer. He was the first team all Southeast District. Caleb Renning was second team Southeast District, and then Brennan Rolls, he was special mentioned in the Southeast District. East District accolades for some of the Tri-Valley players. Max Lyle, he was first team East District. Terrell Darden was third team. Eric Neal was honorable mention. Tri-Valley 19-7 and seven on the season, playing probably their best basketball at the right time of year, Bill. Yeah, uh, no doubt about it. You want to peak near the tournament, and the Scotties have done just that. They are playing their best basketball right now. But I'll tell you something, Fairfield Union, I believe, is playing their best basketball right now as well. Well, Tri-Valley has won 10 of their last 11 games, but Fairfield Union, their last loss was to Tri-Valley. They've won 11 straight. They've won 16 of their last 17 basketball games. So both teams coming on, coming into the game on a roll, so to speak, here. So uh, two teams playing their best basketball. That's what you want to see when you get to this point in the tournament. Yeah, well, and, you know, I was kind of thinking that Fairfield Union might have an advantage because they played the dis their district game right here, both of them right here. So they've uh, seen the convo. They've gotten a chance to play down here before. But... Uh, Tri-Valley, uh, they're, they're an unflappable team. They really seem to travel very well, and uh, the Scotties, they're on a mission. Well, Tri-Valley, they've, they've kind of beefed up their non-league schedule in the past few seasons. They've been playing some of the Columbus teams, and hopefully that's getting them prepared a little bit more for this tournament basketball. And as we said, they've, they've won their last seven games. They're playing probably their best basketball of the year. 
But they're going to need some big production out of their usual suspects here. Max Lyle averaging 12.6 points per game. They're going to need a big game from him tonight. And inside, Noah Nichols, Eric Neal, they're going to have to defend big big players inside, and they're going to have to rebound. That's going to be keys. And then Jaden Walker, I think, really presents the key for Tri-Valley. When he handles the ball well, they don't turn the ball over and they get good shots. But if he's having trouble with pressure tonight, then it could be trouble for Tri-Valley. Ought to be a good one. It's the Scotties. It's the Falcons. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more from the Convo right after this. Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio. Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their patrons Buckeye Mutual Policy. Call today at 638 3 Six zero four, and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. Most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you'll always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford online at DoanFord.com. Do you really think that an insurance company who promises quotes in a few minutes has your best interest in mind? Do they really know you and what coverages you need? Hi, this is John Valentine with Valentine Insurance. We take time to learn about you and your insurance needs so you can feel comfortable that you're receiving the right coverages at the best possible prices. Find us on Facebook, stop by our office, or give us a call at 994-1776. Valentine Insurance, a partner you can depend on. I was sitting in my car and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. And on the radio I heard of West 40 by pay here. Where for a little money down and a little each week. I could have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. So I walked in the door and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. West 40 by pay here will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of a guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there. We're back at the Convo in Athens, getting ready now for the uh, opening tip between Fairfield Union and Tri-Valley. Scotties, uh, as we said earlier, they come in 19 and 7. Falcons come in at 23 and 3. Both these teams clicking on all cylinders as uh, the season has wound down. So uh, the, the bad news for both of these teams is that uh, the winner of this game gets a Bishop Reedy, and we watched the first game. We called the first game against Maysville. Panthers fought, scratched, kicked, clawed. They couldn't stay in the game with the Silver Knights, top-ranked team in the state. Bishop Reedy is waiting for the winner of this game. Bishop Reedy is going to be, um, as I, you know, somebody told me, if, if they don't win, it's it's a failure for them. They, they, you know, this is what they've been guiding themselves to all season. So, um, probably uh, one of the, probably the best basketball team I have seen this year. Um, seen f quite a few high school games that I've, I've called and I've gone to and they're they are legit they're they're the best team I've seen and whoever wins this one is going to have their hands full uh, Tri-Valley Fairfield Union both uh, successful programs are coming in you know 19 and 7 for Tri-Valley Fairfield Union you said 23 and 3 uh, I think Tri-Valley strength has been all year their physical strength and, and the strength of their post players inside um, if they can get some good guard play tonight, uh, they're going to be a tough out for Fairfield Union. And I think Fairfield Union's the same way. They've got some big, strong, physical kids, but 
if they can get some good guard play, they're going to feel good about their chances. Well, it comes down to the guards usually. Uh, we'll have to see what kind of defensive pressure that the Scotties uh, can put on the Falcons. Uh, I think if you let Fairfield Union get into a half-court game, I think that's a big mistake. Well, we'll see what both teams try to do here in this one. And, uh, pretty low-scoring contest that first game where they played against each other at 54-49. So um, it doesn't seem like anybody got out and raced up and down the floor in that one. So we'll see what they do tonight. All right, uh, getting ready now. Not sure, and you and I were talking about this, if they do the national anthem here for the second game. Yeah, it's one of those where we're kind of in down a little bit about that, so we'll see what they decide they're going to do. Um, they did the national anthem here before the first game, but normally the kids are lining up like they're going to do this national anthem, so we'll see what they decide. But see the Tri-Valley kids over on the sideline, they're anticipating a national anthem. Fairfield Union, they haven't broke the huddle yet, so we'll see. We're going to see here really soon. Um, Fairfield Union, they they beat Gallia Academy in the district semifinals, and that was a huge win. as overtime for them. They beat Gallia Academy 40-37, to avenging a previous loss to Gallia Academy, who beat them 36-34. Those just look like the low-point slugfest. Uh, that you know Fairfield Union would probably like to have in this one. Yeah, they want to be they want to play half court basketball. Make no mistake about that. And uh, they have got the post players to do it. Uh, they've got a couple guys who are uh, a really really good size down there in uh, Caleb Schmelzer, number twenty, and number five, Ted Hara. So a lot, as you said, contingent on their guards getting the basketball into those post players. Well, looking here too, we'll. No national anthem, so we're going to go right ahead to the starting lineups for tonight for Tri-Valley. Wearing the white uniforms, head coach Todd McLaughlin, a 5'11 senior, number two, Jaden Walker, a 6'2 junior, number five, Terrell Darden, a 6'4 junior, number 11, Eric Neal, a 6'4 sophomore, number 12, Noah Nichols, and a 6'3 sophomore, number 23, Max Lyle, rounds out the starting lineup for the Scotties. For the Fairfield Union Falcons, head coach Travis Schaefer, and as we mentioned earlier, Travis is the Southeast District Coach of the Year. He's the third Coach of the Year to be in action tonight. His starting lineup includes a 5'9", senior number two, Brennan Rolls, a 6'5", senior number five, Ted Hara, a 6'4", junior number 11, Caleb Redding, a 6'6", junior number 20, Caleb Schmelzer, and a six-foot senior, number 21, Ronnie Rowley, rounds out the starting lineup for the Falcons. And we're getting ready. We're going to introduce the starting lineups here on the court. But those are our starting lineups tonight. And give me a chance here. I can mention our sponsor list quickly here for tonight's basketball game. For this second game, Doan Ford, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, Valentine Insurance, Park National Bank, West 40 Auto Sales, WB Green Insurance, Federal Elite Heating and Cooling, and Allen Hunter State Farm. This is our last of our fine sponsors for our second broadcast tonight here from the Convo, Fairfield Union and Tri-Valley Scotty. Hey, want to mention, too, we had a highlights package on the Scotties before that, and uh, we want to thank uh, Story Rivals, Aaron Sprague, uh, putting together that highlights package for us of the Tri-Valley Scotties uh, so many thanks to him and uh, beautiful package. Uh, did the same for the Maysville Panthers in yep. game number one. And let's also point out our crack staff up here tonight, keeping us under control. Brett Klein running the show tonight. Jaron Aber on the camera. And then we got Christian Mills also running a camera tonight. Those three guys keeping us in line tonight, so, so to speak here. So Brett's in charge? I think Brett so is if in anything, charge. So if anything goes wrong, it's his fault. Exactly. I like this. Exactly. Okay, good. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like having somebody to blame. Okay. All you right. Know. Starting lineup now coming out for the Scotties. I'm going to be interested to see, too, uh, Tri-Valley, uh, the last game that I saw them play, they played John Glenn at Tri-Valley, just blew John Glenn out of the gym. Then they played John Glenn for the second time there, you know, in the tournament. And that's one of those you kind of worry about. It's a neutral floor, but they did the same thing to John Glenn again. 
And sometimes it's just the way that you match up with people. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it was just a tough matchup for John Glenn. John Glenn could, just could not handle the matchups that Tri-Valley gave them. And I think that's a key. How do these teams match up with each other tonight? MVL had a great year this year. Uh, yes. you got to point that out. Right. Uh, you had Maysville. You had Tri-Valley. You had John Glenn. You had New Lexington. You had West M. All five of those teams went pretty deep in the tournament. Tells you something about the MVL. Here's our opening tip. We are underway here at the Convo. Falcons controlling the basketball. We're on Nash Icon FM 107.9 Cambridge and 98.5 Zanesville. They work it now. Coming across now, that's uh, number 20, Schmelzer. Steal by the Scotties. Noah Nichols, nice job there. Terrell Darden came up with a basketball for the Scotties. Hey, these teams match up pretty well size-wise, too. I'm sure that the uh, Falcons aren't used to that. They're a big team. Lyle with the basketball, the sophomore. We work it up top. That is number five. That's Terrell Darden. Shot from the baseline. That was 23. Lyle over the rim. No good. Good defense by Fairfield Union. Here come the Falcons. That's number two. Brennan Rolls. We work it back out top. That's Caleb Redding. Back now to five. That's Hera. Hera down the lane. Up and no good. Just kind of threw that one. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Got off balance a little bit there, but. A good box out there by Tri-Valley, and they're going to have their second possession of the basketball game. And that is number two, Walker, with the basketball. Now top of the key for the Scotties. Lyle takes a look at it from the wing. Back out top of the key. Darden now from the wing. Yes. That's a good sign for Tri-Valley if Terrell Darden can get out and start hitting those three-pointers. That will open things up in the middle for some penetration. All right, Falcons with the basketball now. That is uh, number 21. That's Ronnie Rowley. They work it back now to Hera. Back now outside. That is Rolls. Rolls to Hera. Hera, top of the key, working it down inside. Tri Valley collapses. Now grabbing that basketball's Rolls. Rolls back outside again. Back now to Redding. Nice job there by Tri Valley, not letting them get that lob into the post. Schmelzer with the basketball, looking for some help. Finds Rolls, top of the key. Rolls now, back outside. That is 21 Rowley. Outside again, here's the shot and an answer. That's number 11, Caleb Redding. Both teams firing it from deep early and connecting here, a three to three basketball game. Both teams playing some good defense as well, having a hard time finding a, a place to shoot. But, uh, you know, that's a hallmark of a team on a tournament run. They play good defense. Driving to the hoop now. That's number Dar five. It's Darden that again. That is Terrell Darden. Five points for him, and the Scotties are up 5-3. Darden, nice move. Got to the rim and laid it in. He's got all five for the Scotties early. Rolls up the floor. Shot there by number 11. That is Redding. That's short. Tri Valley comes up with a basketball, a foul called, I believe. Five, yep. They called that on Hera. First, first so foul of the, of the game. A little bit of token pressure now by the Falcons. This is one thing we need to see. Can Jaden Walker handle the basketball against some kind of pressure and do a good job here this first time? Lyle's got the ball. Work it in the corner now. That's uh uh, I think he stepped out of bounds. He may have. That was uh, number 12, Noah Nichols, and he did. So it'll be possession to the Falcons. Each, each team with a turnover so here early in the game. Look, they look really well matched. I mean, like I said, the, the Falcons are a big team, but uh, Scotties have enough size. Uh, they're going to do fine on the boards. All right, here's Rolls, number two, the point guard, and that's going to be on Walker. Aaron Fru just checked into the game for Tri-Valley. Nice having your 6'4 senior come, come in off, off the bench. bench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you what, Scotties are young. They're going to be good again next year. Walker called for the foul out there. Here's Rolls working it down to Hera. Hera back outside. Driving now from the corner. Nice shot there. That is number 11. That's Caleb Redding. Five points for him, it's 5-5, five, five, and he will go to the line 
And shoot to give Fairfield Union the lead. I believe they just called that on Nichols. That'll be his first foul. At the strike with the bonus. Caleb Redding. Shots up by Redding, and that's good. He's got all six for Fairfield Union. Darden's got all five for the Scotties. Yeah. Right. Down the floor now, Jaden Walker for Tri-Valley. Walker, top of the key. In the corner, Lyle, back outside Darden. Let's see. And he put his hands on the dribbler. That's going to be on number 21, Rowley. And this is a call we have seen. They've called it early tonight. If you put your hands on the dribbler and you try to redirect him, they're going to call a foul immediately. And they allow a lot of physical play in tournament play. They really let you play. But the hands on the dribbler is the one they're going to call. Ooh. Here's a ball on the floor. Frug gr grabs it back for the Scotties and gets it back outside to Walker. Nice job there by uh, number 20, Aaron Frug. Here comes Walker driving in, gets it back to Darden. Frug now, Frug. On the block, shots up, can't get it to go. Rebound, Hera. Falcons with the basketball. Rolls. Isaac Schmelzer in the game now for the Falcons. Isaac Schmelzer with the basketball, works it back out now to Hera. Now to Redding. Down low, that's Caleb Schmelzer. Schmelzer on the baseline, working on Lyle, back outside. Redding. Redding loses the handle. That's going to be Scotty's basketball. Some good defense there by number five, Terrell Darden. And also a really nice job from Aaron Frew and on the post did a nice job. Uh, made the made the player pick the basketball up. He was trying to get a move. It was Schmelzer down there trying to make a move. And, you know, it's, Frew was just not going to give any ground there. I mean, Frew was a defensive end, and he was a terror on the football field. So um, any physical play, he's not going to shy away from. All right, Scotty's with the basketball now. It's Darden, Darden in the corner. That is number three in the game. That is uh, Brady Kaufman. Kaufman. And bad pass and picked up there by number 11. That's Caleb Redding. Redding with the basketball up to Rolls now. Rolls across midcourt. It was actually an air ball. Ah, <laughs> thank you so much. I took my eyes off the action for just, can't do that. Actually Downside. an air ball. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure to get the lineups down. And, oh, pressure by the Falcons, but a good job by Tri-Valley coming up with the basketball. Three, Brady Kaufman now with it. Kaufman works it back across to Walker. Darden looking for some help now. Darden's got the ball. Good aggressive man-to-man -man defense by Fairfield Union. Back outside, Lyle's got it. Lyle, top of the key, driving down the lane, can't get it to go. Left-handed shooter, and he tried to finish with his right hand and had no success on that one. Good look at the bucket, though, for Lyle. Schmelzer, now they work it back out top, rolls to Schmelzer, Caleb Schmelzer. Down low, Hera, Hera, Frews on him. Nice job, Walker, digging down from the wing, not letting Hera make a move. Redding to Schmelzer, back to Hera. Big men for Fairfield Union do a nice job handling the ball. Yes, they do. They've been out on the perimeter. They're not afraid to put it on the floor. Redding, back the shot. That is number four. That's Isaac Schmelzer. It's a little short. Scotty's come up with it. Jaden Walker now. Walker slows things up. Darden has it. Driving down the lane. Ball's up and good. Count it. Nice, strong move to his right. Darden got all the way to the rim, went up through the contact, got the bucket, chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Well, still nobody scored for the Scotties, but Terrell Darden, and nobody scored for the Falcons, but Caleb Redding. It's, easy, it's gonna be easy to wrap up the scoring if this keeps on. I, I, I like it. <laughs> Simple's good for me. Darden trying to complete that traditional three-point play. Ball's up, that's good. 8-6. Scotty's by two. Here comes Rolls. Rolls to Schmelzer. Isaac Schmelzer. Now Redding, top of the key. Redding. Back off to Rolls on the wing. 
Ooh, nice job there by Walker as the ball is on the ground. Knocked around a bit. Now the Falcons have it. Now they get it underneath the Schmelzer. Ball's up, and they're going to say that's a charge. That's going to be on Schmelzer, and I'll tell you what, he lowered the shoulder. Nice job by Jaden Walker holding his ground in there, taking the charge from a much taller and bigger player. <laughs> nice job from Jaden Walker right well, That was always my tactic when somebody 6'4 <laughs> was up in my face. I'd fall over. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, though, drawing that offensive foul. Darden gets the inbound. Some pressure by Fairfield Union. So far, Scotties have done a nice job handling that press. Got the basketball now. That is number three with the ball, Kaufman. Work it now on the sidelines to Walker. Walker down to Darden on the baseline. Darden brings it back outside the arc. Now gets it back to Walker on the wing. Walker, top of the key now. Walker down the lane, kicks it outside. Kaufman, Kaufman in the lane, back outside Lyle. Lyle now, top of the key. Looking, nice. nice cut by Darden, up and in, and they're going to count it. Oh, no. they're going to call charge on Darden. Boy, a great job, and I'm not sure who drew the charge. Looks like uh, number two rolls drew that. He was overmatched. Darden's going to take a seat on the bench. Fru comes in, but... Uh, and this is why the, you, you see the line. I mean, I know we're on the radio, but we have video as well. But there's a line there for the college game little arc which they need to put in for high school because he was underneath the basket when he took that charge right there and I, I don't think you call a charge when a defensive player is standing underneath the basket Schmelzer with the basketball it's Caleb top of the key for the Falcons he's going to take the three that's well short of everything right out of bounds so they force the Falcons to take a bad shot and that's not something I don't think they want Schmelzer pumping it up from the three-point line out there. I, I think they want him inside. They've got a couple big guys who can shoot. Here's Fru with the basketball, turning around with it. That's a nice shot by number 11, Eric Neal. Does not go. End of the first quarter of play, a very defensive quarter. The score after one, it's Tri-Valley eight and Fairfield Union six. We'll take a break. Back with more right after this. Promises. You've heard them all. Peace of mind, quality insurance products, superior claim service, all at a fair and competitive price. Since 1848, Westfield Insurance has promised to provide excellent insurance coverage for your home, auto, and business. Sharing knowledge, building trust. That is Westfield Insurance's pledge to their customers. For a quote on protecting your home, auto, and business, call W.B. Green Insurance today. W.B. Green, professional insurance. Park National Bank knows that when you buy your first home, it's the little things that mean the most. I always love to hear my son say, Mom, I don't ever want to move. I want to stay here forever. It's all for him. What means a lot to you means a lot to us. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Back at the convo, getting ready for a uh, second quarter of basketball here. Uh, hey, a uh, quick recap of the scoring there for Tri-Valley and Fairfield Union. Uh, Darden has eight, and Redding has six. Yeah, so <laughs> Tri-Valley has the lead, 8-6. Tri-Valley has the lead, 8-6, because Darden's on Tri-Valley. <laughs> Interesting, uh, it's a, two players have all the scoring here so far in this basketball game. Yeah, the other um, other players have had some shots, but uh, nothing doing except for a number five for the Scotties and number 11 for the Falcons. Underway here now in the second quarter. See if we can add to some of those totals. Here's Walker with the basketball for Tri-Valley. Walker out near midcourt. Walker now off on the sidelines. That's Lyle. Gets it back. That's a shot by number 11. Eric Neal does not go. Falcons with the rebound. Here's Rolls. Oh, a kick by Walker. And that'll be Fairfield Union ball. Jane Walker is doing a really nice job defensively, and he's handled the ball well. Offensively, he's been able to use his quickness to break down the defense, get his own teammates some opportunities with the ball. So, so far, Jaden Walker with a really solid first half of basketball for Tri-Valley. Here's Rolls with the basketball. Works it off to, ooh, nice job there. Poked out and almost stolen. Falcons come up with it. Here's Caleb Schmelzer in the corner. Schmelzer works it across. Now back to Rolls. Rolls down the lane, up and... Can't get it to go. Rebound fought for coming down with it. That's Schmelzer. A lot of 
A lot of traffic in there, a lot of contact. Let's see. Boy, number 12 coming out of there. That is Noah Nichols. He's, he's got his hand on his shoulder. It looks like he might be hurt. He's going to come out of the lineup. He was on the floor. I don't know what happened to him down there. Trainer's going to take a look at him. Schmelzer, number 20, with a couple shots, though. Got that first one. Second shot for Caleb Schmelzer. 8-7, Scotties with a one-point lead. Balls up, got that one. We're tied at eight. And somebody else scored other than Redding or Darden, so. Schmelzer, yeah. Schmelzer gets on the scoreboard, ties his basketball at eight. Walker with the basketball, works it. Oh, Walker driving, shooting in. Nice block there. That was uh, number 20, that's Schmelzer blocking the shot. Falcons down the floor quickly, Redding off in the corner. That is number 21, that's Ronnie Rowley. Two for him, and that's three for him, excuse me, that's 11-8 now. As the Falcons jump on top here as the second quarter is definitely underway. Driving into the paint, that is a Lyle, and let's see, we got a whistle. That was Neal, that was Eric Neal that Eric penetrated Neal's, yeah, there. Yeah, good call. That's gonna be Harris' second foul yeah, for that, Fairfield that's Union. Something, they, they, that's something that the Falcons, they don't want uh, Ted Harris spending that much time on the, on the bench. Neal doing a nice job getting to the rim and put some pressure on the defense and they fouled him going up for the shot. He just can't get the first free throw to go. First shot off the back of the rim, no good. Still 11-8. Hera has to take a seat on the bench. Coming in for him is Isaac Schmelzer. Got that second one. 11-9, Falcons by two. Here comes Rolls with the basketball. In a close game as we expected here, Bill. Yeah, these teams evenly matched. You get the feeling this is gonna go down to the wire. Schmelzer works it back out to his brother Isaac now. Rolls with the basketball now. Rolls looking for some help. And he finds it Redding, Redding. And walked, good, good call. Work. Took a little bit of an extra step as he tried to get some position and shuffled the feet. Fischel was right there. It's going to turn the ball over to Tri Valley. I think it's really interesting to watch defensively how teams handle the ball screen. When, when somebody has the basketball and somebody's screening for them, how do teams handle it? Some teams, you know, they just switch everything. It, and I think that's kind of a lazy way to do it. Both these teams have a tendency to try to fight through the screen and fight over the screen, and it's, it's just... Something that physical teams try to do. Trey Goins Chandler checks into the game for Tri Valley, and let's see, there's going to be a bump out there. Or you going to be on Redding? <laughs> it's going to be on Redding. Or you just try to run over the screener, which is yeah, what, well, which is what Redding always, tried to do. Right always there. an option. <laughs> Not a good option, but an option. That's only the first foul I think on Redding. It is. So no big problems for him. That's five for the team now. Lyle with the basketball now for the Scotties. Back on top, Goins Chamber. Six fouls now for Fairfield Union. Next next foul, Tri-Valley shoots one and one. Walker, top of the key for the Scotties. Back to Goins Chandler on the wing now. Goins Chandler works it back across. That's Max Neal. Neal looking for some help, finds Walker. Walker, top of the key, now dribbles back outside to the wing. Now they work it down low. Triple teamed as Neal finds a man underneath. That's Darden back outside. Lyle for three. Can't get it to go. And the Falcons have the rebound and the lead at 11-9. Here comes Rolls for Fairfield Union. Rolls on the sideline. Isaac Schmelzer works the ball now top of the key. Back outside. Now they work it down. Ooh, that's going to be a grab on Goins Chandler as he got a hold of Redding. That was just out of necessity because he was going to give up a layup if he didn't grab him. He was beat. That's going to be the team's fifth foul. So number 11, Eric Neal takes a seat. Scotties have a strong bench. Schmelzer, Caleb Schmelzer with the ball back to Isaac. Now they now brother slips it to brother as Caleb has it on the block. Turning, shooting, and scoring. Fru did a nice job defensively, but he just, Schmelzer elevates and shoots it over the top of him there. 
Nice move there by Caleb Schmelzer. 13-9 now. It's the Falcons with the lead. Lyle with the basketball for the Scotties. Back out top, Darden. Back to Walker. Down low now. Let's see. What's that going to be? That's going to be an offensive foul on Lyle. An illegal screen. So let's see. How many is that on Lyle? That's his first. Okay. Not a problem there. It's his first. Also the team six. That's going to be a... 30-second timeout now from Tri-Valley. Have a little conversation as they've only been able to score one point so far and about halfway through the second quarter. 13-9, to nine. boy, the Falcons have picked things up. And, you know, I think Tri-Valley's had some good looks. They just haven't connected uh, this point in the second quarter. And uh, they're kind of locking down on Terrell Darden, who had some success early. Well, and the other thing, I want to see if Nichols can get back into the game because they took him out. He was holding his shoulder, and it was one of those where he looked like, you know, it was just the shoulder things are you know, yeah. a mystery sometimes. You never know what happens to him. And he's a pretty important piece for them because he's a good defender. Uh, he does, you know, he's averaging about seven points a game. So, I mean, it's something, you know, we need to see, he's, see he's what part, happens he's a, to him. He's a big part of the rotation. Yes, and I, he is. I don't see him there on the bench right now. They may have taken him back into uh, the locker room. They've got him back in the tunnel working on it, Bill. I see, He's yes. Seen back in there. All right. Falcons with the basketball now for back to live action. Here's number 21. That is Ronnie Rowley. Rowley gets it to Rolls. Rolls, top of the key for the Falcons. Now they work. That's a good job there by uh, number Let's Neo out there working on Caleb Schmelzer. Schmelzer down the lane, kicks it back outside to Rolls. Rolls outside the arc. No, excuse me, that was not Rolls, that was Rowley. Redding now, back to Rolls. Rolls, top of the key, little pick. Redding almost lost a handle on it, was able to collect it, and he's, let's see, he steps on the sidelines. Yep. So that will be Tri-Valley basketball. 13-9, four-point lead for the Falcons. Tri Valley looking for a little offense here as uh, we're good ways into the second quarter. They've only scored one. Well, and they're only shooting 30% from the field right now. Fairfield Union up at 44%. Through with the basketball back now on the wing to Darden. Darden drives into the lane, kicks He's it back fouled. out. That's going to be, yeah. Bump. That's going to be free throws here for Darden. So one and one. Yes, sir. Number 11. And that's Redding's second foul. Darden going to get a chance to shoot the one in the bonus here. Yeah, I don't, you know, you know, Harris, Harris on the bench right now, and now Redding's on the bench with two fouls. Boy, that's uh, a little bit of foul trouble now for the Falcons. And that's one of those, it just depends on your coaching style, what you want to do. Um, when players get two fouls early, you know, if, if it's somebody that's experienced and you, and you want to leave them out there, because you figure they're smart enough to stay out of that third foul, you know, you, you let them stay. Um, other coaches, it's just automatic. If it's in the second quarter and you get a second foul, I, I had a tendency to lean toward the conservative. If they got two fouls, take them out. Don't let them get that third before halftime. All right, and Terrell Darden converts both free throws, so that's going to cut the lead to two, 13 to 11. And Fairfield Union is down a couple of starters. Rolls with the basketball for the Falcons. Rolls. Back outside, Isaac Schmelzer. Back to Rolls on the wing now. Neal doing a great job battling Schmelzer in the low post. Caleb Schmelzer with the ball. Neal. Ah, there's a lot of contact. No call, and the Scotties had the basketball. Ooh. Lyle came in and stripped that ball away when Schmelzer was trying to make a move. Nice defensive play there by Max Lyle. Walker with the ball. Walker driving down the lane, in the lane now. Kicks it back outside to Neal. Neal settles things down. Neal hands the ball off. That is uh, that's Nichols back in the basketball game. Yeah, that's game. good to see Nichols in the lane, spinning, shooting, and missing. Gets his own rebound and kicks it back outside. That's Neal with the basketball. Neal now in the lane and Boy, that's knocked out of bounds by of Fairfield Union. Yeah. Wow. And I'll tell you what, they're helping each other up. They're patting each other. They expect I mean, to play physical. I, yeah. I thought there certainly should have been a whistle right there because Neal got body blocked right there. All right, with the basketball is Max Lyle now. Lyle back out near midcourt for the Scotties. 13-11, two-point lead for the Falcons. 
couple of starters on the bench for Fairfield Union with foul trouble. Here's Darden. Darden in the corner now. That's Lyle. Lyle on the sidelines. Works it back out top now. Walker. Walker out near midcourt. Walker in the lane. Kicks it back outside to Darden. Darden in the corner. Darden gets cut off and double teamed and that's knocked out of bounds. Got a foul. Oh, they're going to get rolls? Okay. Called a foul right there. That's going to be the first, I think, on rolls. Yep. His first. Yep. One, one and one again for Still one Terrell one Garden. Again. Boy, Darden's having a. I think uh, they, there's one other point, Spence. Yeah. Eric Neal has, the, got has the only other point. And first shot for Darden is good. And I think uh, Terrell Darden's about, what, 14 a game, is he? Darden is averaging 13 a game, okay. 5.7 rebounds per game. He's almost hit his average. <laughs> well, he shoots 81% from the free throw line, so they're fouling the wrong guy. As Darden up there shooting free throws, and he makes that one as well, well even a, though I said it. Got the good shooter's roll. Almost. The, the broadcaster's jinx he's, almost worked. He's 5 for 5 from the line. He's got 12 of the Scotties, 13. 13-13, tie game. Schmelzer with the shot from the top of the key. Rebound, Darden. And I think that's a shot Tri-Valley would be happy if they, if Fairfield Union settled for that one. Jaden Walker across midcourt works it now to Lyle. Lyle back to Darden. Lyle on the sidelines, down to Neal on the baseline. Neal's going to take the shot in and out. That was not a bad shot, but it would not go down. He had a good look at it. Rolls. Oh, nice tip there by Walker. It goes to one of the Falcons, though. Picking the basketball up. That is uh, number 10. That is uh, Cole Johnson. 30-second timeout, though. It was a good timeout. I don't think he wanted to give possession away here with just a minute 12 left. 13 to 13. It's like we got us a, a football game here. We got a couple touchdowns, a couple field goals for each team. This is, you know, and we were talking, but this is kind of the way Fairfield Union likes to play. They they right. want to get in half court game. They want low scoring games. They want to get the ball down to their post players and work to get it down there. And, and Tri Valley is showing they can play that kind of basketball. They can play that because they they can physically match up with their post players, and that's a key because a lot of teams aren't going to be able to match up with the post play that, that Fairfield Union presents. Now, you know, I think it bodes well for Fairfield Union right now that they're doing this with two of their starters over on the bench in foul trouble. Yeah, Hera and Redding, two pretty key players. Oh, here's Darden with a steal. Darden, nice job. Scotty's had the basketball. Back to Walker now. They'll slow things down and set it up. Walker now, top of the key. Takes a look at it, now throws a little floater up and got it. Nice job there, beautiful move. Jaden Walker, couple fakes and nice high arcing, soft touch, got her to go. 15-13, Scotty's under a minute to go here in the first half. Rolls with the basketball on the sidelines. Little 6-0 run here by Tri-Valley. Now here's Rolls, front. Ah, Schmelzer can't handle the pass. That's gonna be Tri-Valley ball. I thought Lyle might have got a piece of that over his foot, but I guess not, so. Right, what do you do here, Coach? You hold for last shot? You've got I, a two-point lead? I hate lead. holding the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard for high school kids to do this, but they're still, now we're down to 30 seconds. Walker going to get it into the front court, but that's tough to do. Going to spread the floor. Kind of a four corners look here. But they're going to look like they're going to try it. Rolls is out there on Walker. Now they work it back to Lyle. Lyle now. Lyle. Reverses his dribble, gets it back near midcourt, and now they just called an offensive foul on Lyle. Player control foul charge number 23, Max Lyle. Yeah, Lyle's it's not happy with the call, and, and I'm kind of wondering what he was calling. I, 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 I didn't see anything. Confused a little bit on that, so. Yeah, uh, and Trey Goins Chandler's going to come in. We're going to set Walker down. 8.9 seconds left. You don't want Walker picking up another foul. Here's Rolls with the basketball. Rolls down the lane. Gets his man up in the air. Shots up and in. That is number 10 for the Falcons, Cole Johnson. And just like that, we are at the half, Dave Hilliard. 15 to 15. So doesn't get any closer than this, does it? No, and that's, uh, you know, that where they're going to hold it for one. Like I said, it's tough to hold it for one. They get the offensive foul called against them, and they go down and convert and tie the score. 
All right, we are at halftime. Tri-Valley has 15 and Fairfield Union has 15. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more from the convo right after this. Some things in life are just automatic. Like me, State Farm Agent Alan Hunter, offering great neighbor service plus surprisingly great rates on auto insurance. If you were to contact us right now, you'd find you could have some of those surprisingly great rates and good neighbor service right away, as in automatically. Give me or my staff, Austin, Minley, Lori, or Kelly, a call today. 740-439-5385. We think you'll be automatically happy you did. Like National Bank knows that when you buy your first home, it's the little things that mean the most. I always love to hear my son say, Mom, I don't ever want to move. I want to stay here forever. It's all for him. What means a lot to you means a lot to us. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Home is where you should feel the safest, but sometimes the air there can be more harmful, up to five times more polluted than the outside air. Federal Elite Heating and Cooling in Bryant can help you take the steps toward making a healthier home with our indoor air quality solutions. From UV lights, Cool home purifiers to a whole new system? Visit federalheating.com or call 754-HEAT to schedule your comfort evaluation. And ask about our six-year equal monthly payment financing option at 0%. Restrictions apply. Let Federal Elite and Bryant do whatever it takes to give you peace of mind. Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their Patrons Buckeye Mutual policy. Call today at 638 638- Three six zero four, and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. Home is where you should feel the safest, but sometimes the air there can be more harmful, up to five times more polluted than the outside air. Federal Elite Heating and Cooling in Bryant can help you take the steps toward making a healthier home with our indoor air quality solutions. From UV lights, cool home purifiers to a whole new system, visit federalheating.com or call 754-HEAT to schedule your comfort evaluation. And ask about our six-year equal monthly payment financing option at 0%. Restrictions apply. Let Federal Elite and Bryant do whatever it takes to give you peace of mind. Most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you'll always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford online at DoanFord.com. I was sitting in my car, and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood, and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. Then on the radio, I heard of West 40 by pay here, where for a little money down and a little each week, I could have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. So I walked in the door, and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. West 40 by pay here will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of a guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there. We're back at the Convo. Bill Kastler, Dave Hilliard with you here. 15-15 at the half, and uh, the game has looked about as even as it's played. Uh, Boy, Terrell Darden uh, having a pretty good first half. He's got 12, and the Scotties only have 15. Jaden Walker's got that other bucket. Nice move there in the lane, and then Eric Neal's got one out of two free throws. Uh, so that's their 15 total. Fairfield Union, uh, Caleb Schmelzer's got four. Caleb Redding's got six. Cole Johnson's got two. Ronnie Rowley's got three. So that's their total of 15. So both teams here, 15 apiece at the half. Uh, statistically, just looking at, and again, fine folks here at the OU at the Convocation Center, hand us stats. So it makes us look really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel smarter. From the field. <laughs> 
Fairfield Union, five for 11 overall, 45%. And that's including two of four from the three-point line, which is 50%. Uh, Tri-Valley, four of 13 overall from the field. It's 30.8%. One of five from the three-point line. That's 20%. So uh, Tri-Valley's done a nice job, though. They've made six of seven free throws. Uh, and then Fairfield Union has converted all their free throws at three of three. Uh, one of the things that we look at, um, offensive rebounds and turnovers. Those are two things that are really important. Um, both teams have only given up one offensive rebound. So Fairfield Union's got one offensive, or excuse me, they got, yeah, they've got one. Uh, Tri-Valley has one offensive rebound. Uh, Tri-Valley with five defensive rebounds. Fairfield Union with eight. And that's a little bit back in the story in that first game. Fairfield Union just had more opportunities because Tri-Valley's missed more shots. So that's, you know, that's one of those where they've just had more opportunity to get defensive rebounds. Uh, in the turnover department, Fairfield Union with nine, Tri-Valley only with two. So that's a key for me in that you're trying to get find a way to get more shots than your opponent. And you do that by turning them over and getting offensive rebounds. The rebounding has been pretty even. I mean, you just, you just watch. It's been very even. No team's had a decided advantage on the boards. But the turnovers, uh, if Tri-Valley can keep that up, that's going to be something that is going to be a key to this basketball game as we go on here in the second half. One reason I think it's been even on the boards is a couple of players for the Falcons, uh, number five, Ted Hera, and uh, number 11, Caleb Redding, a couple of big guys, 6'5 and 6'4". Both had to spend considerable time on the bench in the first half with two fouls. Well, and I had the count wrong. They have Hera listed with three. And it oh. was missing a foul somewhere, and they called Hera. He has a third foul. So he has actually three fouls for Fairfield Union, which is something, again, that we need to keep a, an eye on here in the second half uh, because overall, you know, they've got eight personal fouls. Uh, Tri-Valley was seven. But uh, nobody with any real big problems. That, yeah. Does anybody have two for the... Uh, Lyle, that okay. second foul yes. there. Right yeah, the that's, that's the, right. Yep. But uh, three fouls on uh, one of your big post players, and you know, that, that cuts into rebounding a little bit. So hey, we are uh, approaching the second half, and uh, we are tied right now at 15. We're going to take a quick break, step out and pay a few bills, and we'll be back with more from the convo right after this. In your time of need, will you be happy with your cut rate car insurance? Will you have the coverages you need? Valentine Insurance is dedicated to protecting you and your family when you need it. As an independent insurance agency, we have partnered with many reputable insurance companies who even have local claims adjusters to provide you with unbeatable service. Are you going to trust a talking lizard to help you with your claim? Really? Don't let this happen to you. Trust the professionals at Valentine Insurance. Call 994-1776. At Park National Bank, you'll find bankers who take the time to listen to you and make your financial goals their top priority. Want more out of your banking relationship? It's time to talk to Park National Bank. Call, visit, or go online to get the conversation started. Member FDIC. In today's marketplace, you have many choices for insurance. WB Green Insurance, a representative of Westfield Insurance, is committed to providing you with excellent coverage for your home and auto at a fair and competitive price. Westfield has been in the neighborhood for over 150 years, providing peace of mind and quality insurance products through independent insurance professionals. Sharing knowledge, building trust is Westfield's pledge to their customers. Call WB Green Insurance today. Welcome back to the Boys Division II Regional Semifinals. We're approaching uh, second half action. Uh, Tri-Valley and Fairfield Union nodded up at 15. Bill Kastler, Dave Hilliard with you here calling the action. Got a good one here and uh, low scoring basketball game, good half court game. And uh, either this could go either way. Like to see one of those teams from the MVL make the regional final. Well, and as you said, it could go either way. 15 all, two evenly matched teams. They've already played once this year. This is the rematch. And that was a tightly contested basketball game the first time they played. So, again, we expect this to be played close to the vest this second half. I mean, uh, if, if somebody gets to 40, they might be the winner in this one. <laughs> well, we will see. Uh, boy, 
neither team lighting it up from behind the arc at this point. And if uh, <laughs> somebody gets a hot hand, that could spell the end for the other team. Good. We'll just have to see how it goes. Fairfield Union going to have the first possession of our second half here, Bill. So number 11, Caleb Redding, out on the floor. And, they, you know, they have uh, number five, Ted Hara, back out, out there. He's got three fouls. And he's a big part of what they like to do. Here's Schmelzer, Caleb Schmelzer with the basketball now. Down low, Schmelzer's got it again. Frew's out on him. That's a little change in the starting lineup for the Scotties in the second half. Frew out there in place of Nichols. Driving, shooting, and missing. That was Rolls. Couldn't get it to go. Jaden Walker has the basketball, and here come the Scotties. Walker, top of the key now. Takes a look. Now Lyle back in the corner. Shot by Frew off the rim. No good. That was Neal got a hand on it, but he couldn't pull it in. Fairfield Union with the basketball now. Here's number 21, Rowley. Rowley back to Schmelzer. Boy, they've, they've done a good job on Schmelzer tonight. They really have. Harris got the basketball. Block and getting his own oh, rebound as he's... Hera working hard on Neal. So Ted Harris got the first two of the second half, 17-15 Falcons. 6.50 left in the third. Here comes Jaden Walker. Hands it off on the sidelines. That is Lyle. Back to Walker. Top of the key now, Neal. Neal takes a look over things, looking for a little help. Back now to Walker. Back across to Darden. In the corner, that's Frew. Frew. Outside the arc, now Neal. Scotty showing some patience, looking for a good shot here. Darden reverses the ball back. That's Neal driving down, and Hera takes a chance and blocks that shot. Went up aggressively. Rolls with the basketball for the Falcons. Now Schmelzer down in the paint, turning, shooting, and scoring. In this first four minutes of the second half is one of the most important stages in a basketball game. Fairfield Union has jumped out to four quick points here to start this, this four-minute segment of the second half. All right, Scotty's need an answer. Here's Walker with the basketball. Walker down the lane. That's Frew in the corner. Frew drives it into the lane, now kicks it out top to Lyle. Back to Darden. Darden drives to the baseline. He's cut off. Finds Lyle in the lane. Back outside. That's going to be short. Darden throws the ball off one of the Falcons. Let's see. They're going to say no. He missed him. He tried, but he missed him. Yeah, that was uh, number 21. Brady it's Ronnie Kaufman. Rowley. Brady Kaufman going to check into the basketball game for Frew. Uh, I really don't think Frew shooting three-point shots is what they envisioned here for their offensive possessions, and he shot two here to start this second half. 19-15, Falcons by four now. Schmelzer with the basketball for Fairfield Union. Schmelzer top of the key now. Big man handling the ball. They work it down low. Nice job there. Neal. That was Got Neal. around in front. Eric Neal closing that passing lane down. Here's Walker turning the ball over. Hera going after the ball. Picks up the steal. Now he gets it back to Rolls, and the Falcons have it. On the sidelines, back out top now. That is number 11 driving, shooting. That's Redding. Can't get it to go, and, and that's going to be foul. on. That's going to yeah, be on Hera. That's going to be his fourth, and I'll, I'll give Hera credit. He has come out here in this second half, and he's like, it's not going to change my game. I'm playing aggressive. Now, they just said that's his third. Okay, so he is going to come out. They just put it up on the board as his fourth foul. I'm confused. The announcer said third foul. They put it up on the board as his fourth foul. I only had him for three, but then my scoring is not always. It's I know. It's unofficial. We're unofficial. It's exactly. unofficial. That's right. Here's Jaden Walker with the basketball now for the Scotties. 19-15. Scotty's trail by four. Walker, Lyle, top of the key. Working it down in the paint. Darden's got it up in. A lot of contact, no call. Rolls has it now for Fairfield Union. Here come the Falcons. Rolls up the floor. Finds Redding. Redding outside the arc. Kicks it back to Rolls now. Rolls driving into the paint. Ball's up and can't find the range. In and out. Neal with the rebound. Scotty's have it. 19-15. 4-12 left here in the third. Walker. Walker. Back outside to Darden. Walker. Darden. Long shot by Lyle. Yes! 
That's they, big. They needed that one right there, Max Lyle. His first bucket of the game, and it's a three, and it draws the Scotties within one here. Under four to go in the third quarter. 19-18. Here comes Rolls for the Falcons. Back to Schmelzer. That's Isaac Schmelzer. Now he gets it down low. That is Rowley. Rowley up, and he scores. Two for Ronnie Rowley. 21-18. Three-point lead for the Falcons. Walker on the sidelines. Lyle. Lyle. Back across. That's Darden. Darden in the corner. Darden in the corner now. He and Neal change places. Now Darden drives the baseline. Up and can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. Fighting for it. And throws it out of bounds. Let's see. They're going to say timeout. Out. Coach McLaughlin called a timeout. So that will be Tri Valley basketball. Nice job there by Terrell Darden, missing the shot but grabbing his own rebound. Yes, he did. He stayed after it. He took it right at Schmelzer. Schmelzer wouldn't foul him. Just played good defense there. Distracted the shot or, or the shooter, and Darden had to fight for that offensive board before he could fall out of bounds. Coach McLaughlin got the timeout called. Well, 21-18. You got to give the Falcons some credit. They come out, they start the second half aggressively and very well. But uh, one of their key players, number five, Ted Hara, one of their post players, picking up his third foul, and uh, he's on the bench right now. Then Max Lyle, he hits that three from deep, so maybe that'll get him going a little bit here for Tri Valley, who not shooting it well at all from the field. 26% from the field right now. Compared to Fairfield Union's 44% from the field. So some, some good defense by Fairfield Union, but uh, right now at this point, nobody from Tri-Valley really has the hot hand. No. Inbounds to Darden under the bucket. Darden up and got it. Nice job there, staying after it. They knocked it away from him momentarily, and he gathered it and got it back up and laid it in. 21-20, Falcons with a one-point lead, Rolls with a basketball for Fairfield Union. Rolls. Back now to Redding. Redding, outside the arc, drives to the elbow, kicks it back outside to Schmelzer. Knocked out of bounds, that's Max Lyle. Good play defensively there. Tell you, it's a good battle underneath. Frew and Schmelzer, both number 20s, going at each other in the post. And then we got some more substitutions here for Tri-Valley. Eric Neal back into the game for Fru. And then Jack Winland just checked into the game as well. Rowley's inbounds to Rolls. Rolls drives to the elbow. Now he's going to take the shot. That's going to be short. Picked up by Walker. Here comes Walker up the floor quickly. Walker down. Up and can't get it to go. Rebound fought for. Coming down with it is Fairfield Union. Redding with the basketball. Redding has it tipped away. And Darden's wow. got it. He's undercut by Redding. Let's see what the call is. Now that's definitely a foul. That's got to be on Redding. Yeah, that's on Redding. And Darden, that hurt. That was... Yeah, now, now, boy, <laughs> Coach Schaefer not happy with the call, but it's a good call. Going after a loose ball. Yeah, exactly. I've got that as Redding's third that's foul. That's what I have as well. So... Probably going to come out of the game. And uh, two guys you really can't afford. I mean, they'll come back in probably in the fourth quarter, but they've got two guys on the bench you really don't want to have on the bench. And it's a 21-20 game. I mean, this is, as we said, it's got the, all the makings going down to the wire. Yeah, Cole Johnson in for the Falcons now. Back outside. It's uh down inside, that's Neal with the basketball. Neal spinning, gets the ball, oh, and up fouled. and he was pushed. That is uh, number one, that's Jack Winland. He got pushed, he's gonna go to the line and shoot two. And that Ronnie one Ronnie was on rally, hits his second foul. One thing uh, they're having problems Jack with is some line. fouls. Winland at the line, shooting two here. First one's up and, ah, that's a crier. <laughs> well, it goes in, catches a lot of iron. Good for him because he's only at 38% for the season, so that he got that one to go is a good sign. 21-21 for the lead, short. Rebound battled for. Scotty's come down with it. Let's see. They're going to say that's going to be on Neal, I think. They're going to call a foul on Tri-Valley. That's Neal. I think Neal picking it up. Yep. His first, though. 
That's his first. Team first. Tie game. <laughs> Boy, good dispersal of fouls by the Scotties, though. <laughs> Coach McLaughlin doesn't really agree with that call. No, he didn't. They were battling for a loose ball. A lot it, of people it, just going for the ball. It was the same as Schaefer with that other call. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just, hey, my guy was going for the loose ball. Yep. Look, here, here's Isaac Schmelzer with the basketball. Schmelzer, he kicks it back outside to Rolls. Rolls. Back now, that's uh, number 10, Johnson. Driving and let's see, that was Isaac Schmelzer, number four. He's going to be fouled, and they're calling that one on Lyle. That's, that's his, his third. third. Next Lyle, that's his third team, second. Puts Isaac Schmelzer at the line. Isaac Schmelzer going to the free throw line here. Schmelzer shot is up, and that's good. 22-21, Falcons by one. Second shot now, and got them both. Jaden Walker with the basketball now. Two-point lead for the Falcons. Tri-Valley has the ball. Neal, down low, Darden up and can't get it to go. Trapped on the baseline, breaking out. Pretty That's going to be traveling. That was uh, number 21, Rowley. Good job by the Scotties that time. A little bit too much traffic for Rowley, and he tried dribbling around it and got it with both hands. So I thought that might have been a little bit unnecessary in the backcourt, a little desperation there from Tri-Valley, but got away with it and forced a turnover. Lyle in the corner, driving and working it. Oh, there's a steal by Rolls and a good one. Up the floor quickly, rally, and got it. Run out baskets. Run Ronnie Rally gives the Falcons a four-point lead, 25-21. 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. Jaden Walker with the basketball now. Walker, top of the key for the Scotties. Works it back over Darden for three. Yes! From deep for the triple. Darden with 17 now for Drive Alley. Yeah, he is the man of the day for the Scotties. 25-24, one-point lead for the Falcons. Caleb Schmelzer has the ball, 23.1 seconds. Now working the clock down 20 seconds. I think they want to try to get the ball out 15. of his hands. Yeah, there. They want to Roll, get it to Rolls, Rolls to run the show. Rolls has it. Rolls. Outside the arc, driving, shooting in, can't get it to go. Let's see, and that, that's going to be on uh, one of the Scotties. I think that may be number one, Jack Winland. Yeah, that's going to be on Winland. Number one, Jack Winland. So with 5.2 seconds left, Rolls has a chance Rolls at the line. to shots. add to the lead. Two shots here. 25-24, Falcons, 26-24. Tri-Valley's got 5.2 seconds left to try to score here at the end of this quarter. Second shot now for Rolls. Got them both. Big shots. Darden to Walker. Four seconds. Walker up the floor. Walker driving, shooting, and blocked by Schmelzer. That's going to do it. The end of three quarters of play. The score is Fairfield Union 27, Tri Valley 24. We'll take a break. Back with more right after this. Some things in life are just automatic. Like me, State Farm Agent Alan Hunter, offering great neighbor service plus surprisingly great rates on auto insurance. If you were to contact us right now, you'd find you could have some of those surprisingly great rates and good neighbor service right away, as in automatically. Give me or my staff, Austin, Minley, Lori, or Kelly, a call today. 740-439-5385. We think you'll be automatically happy you did. Like We are back, getting ready for the fourth quarter of play. It's a close one. Fairfield Union has a three-point lead, 27-24 in the Tri-Valley Scotties. Scotties playing some tough basketball right now, but Fairfield Union so far up to the challenge. Boy, foul trouble could uh, spell some problems though for the Falcons. We'll see how this fourth quarter plays out. There's a lot of folks with fouls. Uh, Terrell Darden 
leading the Tri-Valley Scotties. He's got 17 points of their 24. Uh, Max Lyle's got three that he just made that three there in the third quarter. Thought that might get him going a little bit here to finish this basketball game. They're going to need some more scoring from somebody besides Darden, though, to erase this three-point lead and get out in front. And as I said, if you get to 40, you might win this one, 27-24. I'm beginning, the more I look at it, the more I think you're right. We are underway here. Jaden Walker with the basketball. Tri-Valley has it. Walker. That's Lyle on the sidelines. Now Neal, top of the key, back to Walker on the sidelines. Walker. Now he tries to work it up top. Picked up there by Lyle. They ran a set play, trying to get the ball to Darden underneath off of a screen, and they just couldn't get it to him. Walker, Walker, top of the key, driving down the lane, kicks it back outside to Lyle. Lyle will take the shot. No good. Rebound. That's through. That shot is blocked. Great job there. I think that that was uh, number five. That was uh, Ted Hara. Here come the Falcons with the basketball and the lead. Redding now. Redding. Works at the Schmelz are down low now. Hera turning, shooting, missing, rebound, fought for, coming down with it. That's Neal. Oh, Hera almost got his fifth foul right there. <laughs> Slapped down on Eric Neal trying to knock it loose. One thing I like about Hera, he hasn't changed the way he plays. No, he has not. Neal, now they get the ball back outside to Lyle, now backside to Walker. Now it's Neal on the elbow. Neal takes a look at Schmelzer. Neal going to pull back. Looking for a shot. Doesn't have a good one, so he gets it back to Lyle. Boy, good defense by the Falcons. Of course, you get to the, Here's Darden with a shot for three. In and out. Rebound. Walker. Walker under the leg. Collapse on him. And let's see. They're going to say that is Fairfield Union ball. They're going to call timeout. Fairfield Union called timeout. 30-second timeout. Boy, Walker had the ball underneath. And... I've never seen such a collapse of black jerseys. They were all over him. This, the <laughs> smallest guy on the floor came up with an offensive rebound, but he's in amongst the trees there, and he was collapsed on, uh, couldn't get rid of it, and it was actually, I, I thought there was a lot of contact on that play, but didn't get called, so uh, Fairfield Union comes up with a basketball, laying on the ground, and Coach calls a timeout, so they get a timeout. 27-24, yet to have a point here in the fourth quarter. I'm beginning to wonder if we do get to 40. <laughs> Well, you think maybe with fouling at the end, it's a possibility, but uh, we might not get to 40 in this one. Falcons ball, full court pressure by the Scotties. 6.30 left in the ball game. Redding with the inbounds. He's got the basketball now. Darden's on him. Darden, Walker, steps up. Now Rolls has it for the Falcons across midcourt. Back to Redding, back to Rolls. Rolls, Schmelzer, way out near midcourt. That's Redding now. Redding, they run the play. And nice job there by Schmelzer to finish nice, that off. Nice set play there to run that back screen and get the lob to Schmelzer, and he lays it in. Five-point lead now. This is the biggest lead of the game for either team, I think. Yes, Walker it is. With the basketball. Walker with the basketball. Now Neal's got it. Neal, top of the key, looking for some help. Walker cutting, shooting, and missing. Blocked. Was that blocked was by that Hera. Was Hera and has not changed his approach. He's still aggressive. Here comes Rolls. Rolls to Redding. Redding for three. No good. Rebound fought for. Coming down with it. They're going to say jump, jump ball. ball. Possession ball. arrow. Let's see. Falcons retain possession. So it will be Falcons basketball. Caleb Schmelzer over the inbounds on the baseline. Works it into Rolls. Back to Schmelzer. Schmelzer. In the corner, nice job by Darden to reach out and steal that basketball. Tri-Valley with the ball. Darden up the floor. There's Lyle. Lyle out near midcourt. Scotty's looking for a spark offensively. Anybody looking for some offense. Lyle down the lane, up and can't get it to go. Rebound through, can't get it to go. Darden's got it. Darden up and in. Wow. Nice effort by Tri-Valley. Three players just battling hard in there. Darden with the final offensive rebound and put back. Great effort there from Darden. Three-point lead for the Falcons now. Rolls with a basketball. Still full court pressure and up. A tip away. Walker's ahead. Walker's going to drive, shoot, and score. Round two of the steal, Team Walker. 29-28. Wow. Steal. Steal by Darden. Darden works it back. Lyle up and no. Rebound Darden. Can't get it to go. He's fouled. Here's the Tri-Valley run right here. 
Boy, just a big turnover there. Darden came up with another steal. I thought he was just going to go all the way to the rim, but he got it to Lyle, but Lyle couldn't finish. Then offensive rebound again, and there's Darden back at the free throw line. It's going to be a timeout, a full timeout for Fairfield and, Union. And a good timeout by Fairfield Union yes. because at this point, they're starting to turn the basketball over. Tri-Valley forcing two or three turnovers in a row, and they've capitalized. Well, it was 29-24. That was the biggest lead of the game, and now it's 29-28 with Darden at, at the line with a chance to take the lead. Back and forth we go. It has been a good one. I don't think we're going to make 40. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think we're going to make it. Doesn't make any difference. Just matters who's ahead at the end of this game. Exactly. Exactly. So 440 to go, 29-28. Darden's going to get a chance to add to his point total right now. He's got 19, two free throws on the way. His team's only got 28 points, so... He's, he's, he's got, having a pretty good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Basically got about two-thirds of the points here. So, Somebody else is going to need to score, too, and that's a big bucket there from Jaden Walker. Well, I think I, Lyle's got a shot in him here somewhere, too. I, I like the approach of both teams. They've, they've got their players out on the floor. They're just going, the we're going to dance with who brung us. Yeah. Darden. Doesn't matter about foul trouble now. 440 left here in the fourth. Darden. First one's perfect. Second shot now for Terrell Darden. 29-29. 440 left in the ball game. Try and give the Scotties the lead. Count it. And there's a 6-0 run from Tri-Valley to get that lead back. Schmelzer with the basketball. Frews right out on him. Through. A little half court nice, trap. Nice job there. And uh, boy, Lyle came up and they had him trapped. Nice job there. Tri Valley switched up their defenses out of the timeout and came up with a little half court trap, Bill. Chess match continues between the coaches. Rolls with the basketball now for the Falcons. Rolls on the wing. Now he comes top of the key. Rolls back, looking for some help, looking for Schmelzer. Can't find anybody. Now he's going to get it to Redding. Redding has the ball outside the arc. Redding on the baseline. Hera, Hera kicks it back outside. There's Rolls. Rolls is up and no good, but he was fouled. It's going to be on Neal or Furrow, one of the two. They called that one on Walker. It's going to be on Walker. I didn't yeah. even see him in there. <laughs> 14 foul. All right. Two shots now for the point guard. Brendan Rolls, ball's up, no good. And he is an 83% free throw shooter. Boy, I'll tell you right now, down by one, and uh, he's got a second shot, chance to tie the game. And got he, that second one, yeah. so we're even to 30 now. He's three of four from the line here, and that's what you want your point guard to be able to shoot free throws, over an 80% free throw shooter. That's tell you what you he's want a, on he's, the line. He's a good one. I've been impressed with him. He does, does a nice job from the point. Down in the corner, that's Fru, Fru. Back out to Walker. Walker, Drive Alley point guard, has done a nice job as well. Walker back on the sidelines. That's Lyle back to Darden. Darden drives, shoots, and scores. Terrell Darden just putting Tri Valley on his back right now. <laughs> I'll tell you what, get the ball to number five. I think he can score. <laughs> Oh, Rolls loses the basketball. That's going to be over and back. No, it was tipped by Walker. Okay. Official even, he had his right on it. He, was, he said it was tipped all the way. All right, Hera with the basketball now. Works it back over to Redding. Redding driving. He lost Drops it. the ball out of bounds. It will be, they say, knocked out of bounds by Darden. 3.20 to go. Tri-Valley clinging to a two-point lead here <laughs> desperately. Wow. Back and forth we go. And just a few minutes ago, it was Falcons by five. Lyle loses the ball. That's going to be Scotty's basketball. Big turnover right there. Huge in this basketball game. Now Tri Valley in the driver's seat. Got the ball, 3.18 to go. Chance to get some offense going and get another bucket here. Walker's got to get the ball across half court, though. He there does. We go. Good job. Neal with the basketball. Neal. On the baseline, that's Walker. Walker now on the sidelines, brings it out, top of the key. Walker 
Back to Neal. Neal. Neal working on Schmelzer. He's cut off and now looking for some help. Finds it in Lyle. Lyle out on the sidelines. They're trapping. Gets the ball now to Neal. Neal gets around his man. Driving, shooting, and blocked. That's going to be a foul. foul. That's going to be number four on Ted Hera. Or is that his fifth? <laughs> We're going to find out, aren't we? Foul charge to number five, Ted Hera. His fourth. It's his fourth. He's got one left, and that's going to put number 11 on the line, Eric Neal. That these answers are, the question about the foul. These are big free throws right here. Yeah, finally. Scoreboard had it wrong. Shots up by Neal. Yeah, in and out. <laughs> Neal, 56% free throw shooter on the year. He's one out of three tonight. Second shot now for Neal. Come on, Eric, put it in. Off the back of the rim, no good. Lyle. Scooping in, Lyle's got it. Lyle's trapped on the baseline. He's going to get it way back out on top. That's Frew back to Walker. Nice 30, play there from Max Lyle. 32-32 point lead for the Scotties. They have the basketball. Now Walker, Walker down, driving, looking for some room. Can't find it. Now he's outside again. Timeout on the nice floor. Nice timeout there from Coach McLaughlin. Yeah, they looked a little confused. A little so. confused, a little unorganized, so that's a good timeout get everybody over there and talk about what they want to do here and uh, I've watched enough Tri-Valley games to know that Coach McLaughlin's got a play that he has in mind and they're going to try to execute something out of this timeout something that they've done you know all year they're going to they're going to try to run a set play get themselves a good shot here important possession in the game up to two points with 221 to play well I'll tell you what if you can get it up to a four point lead it's a pretty big deal at this point yes because that's two possessions <laughs> Just a few minutes ago, <laughs> it was 30 to 26, and the Scotties kind of went off yep. and uh, really have come down and taken charge of this basketball game. 32-30. Well, with 4:40 to go, it was 29-28, and that was with Darden at the line with the opportunity to get him back in front. And uh, you know, 32-30 as we stand right now. So um, points hard to come by. Um, Two teams evenly matched, very physical play. Um, whoever can make a shot here in the last couple minutes is going to walk away with this one. Darden all alone in the corner. Now they come out and get him. He's going to ha have the inbounds. You always watch that guy that is inbounding the basketball. Here's Neal with it. Takes a look at Darden. Now he gets it back out to Walker out near midcourt. Now we're going to see what set they wanted to run here. Neal on the elbow, back to Walker, Walker. And to get it back out top, that's Lyle. Lyle down the lane, has his pass knocked back, gets it to Darden, Darden on the sidelines. They had what they wanted. They wanted Lyle with that left-handed penetration. Darden driving, shooting, and missing. Let's see, that's gonna be, a, is that a foul? Yep, they got a foul, and Darden's gonna go to the line. What they had, they had Lyle going to the basket with his left hand, they had Darden in the corner. So if the defense comes and helps and tries to stop Lyle, but Lyle, the ball got knocked away from him a little bit, and he just couldn't get it out to Darden in that corner. And Darden's going to shoot a couple free throws now. These are big. But nice play there to get the ball back. And Darden, aggressive, went to the hole and got fouled. Shots up by Darden, in and out. First one in and out. That's his first miss of the night from the free throw line. This is a big, big free throw right here. Yeah, he had made six in a row. That was his first miss. 158 to go in the basketball game. And Terrell Darden has done a great job tonight. He has just carried the Scotties. Balls up and got it. Three-point lead. That's still one possession now. Here's Rolls with the basketball for the Falcons. Rolls across midcourt. Tri-Valley defense has really come up big here in the last couple minutes. Oh, okay. down low. That's Hera. Hera with a basketball. Shooting and scoring. There's a nice set play there. They got Hera to the basketball deep. And he gathered, nice shot fake, got it up and in. One point game now, minute and a half to play. Walker with the basketball now. Walker driving down. Lane loses the handle. Oh, that's going to be on number two. That's going to be on Rolls. Not happy with the call, but that's, he's going to pick one up. And that's going to be a one and one here for Jaden Walker. 69% free throw shooter on the season. Boy, you know, it comes Jayden down to free throws a lot, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Big first shot here. No Can't good. get it. 
Harrow with the rebound. Back to Rowley and back now to Rolls. Minute 17 to go. Rolls working on Walker. Rolls, top of the key now for the Falcons. And Darden <laughs> working hard on Redding. Redding now outside the arc, back outside to Rolls. Rolls, the point guard in the corner. Rowley, that's Hera on the elbow, back outside Rolls now. Boy, Fru just won't let Schmelzer get the basketball in there. Schmelzer's got it now, it he's him. got it. Working on his man, Schmelzer shooting and scoring. And he's fouled too. Two for Caleb Schmelzer. Falcons by one and 46.3 seconds left. Schmelzer trying to complete that three point play. To the line with the bonus. Caleb Schmelzer. Schmelzer now trying to make it a two point lead. Ball's up, good. Timeout, Tri Valley. Yeah, I don't think the Scotties are gonna panic at this point. 46.3 seconds left. Boy, you need some kind of a good shot and you gotta figure that's what Coach McLaughlin is doing over on the sideline. He's saying, look guys, we need to get somebody open. We need two, we don't need three. Well, he's gonna go over there and he's gonna talk about something that they wanna run that they've done you know, throughout the year, it's not like he's going to draw something up magical on the board. That does not happen. People think that happens. It does not happen. Good coaches have already practiced this situation. He's got something in mind already. He just wants to make sure all of his kids are on the same page. Now, if you're in this huddle, here's a good time to change your defense. Uh, if, you know, you've been playing man, I mean, if you got some kind of trap or something that you run out of your man-to-man -man defense, this would be the time to bring it out because that could be disruptive to what they want to do. So uh, it's a little bit of a chess match here between the coaches, but eventually the players have to execute here. So we'll see how this last 46 seconds plays out. Well, it's the Falcons by two, 35-33. Tri-Valley with the basketball now. And a full, little four-court pressure here. Walker's got it. Rolls is out on him. Walker on the sidelines. That's Lyle. Going to run Lyle off now. a double screen. Top the key. Back door Down to Darden. Low, Darden's got it. He has to turn around. He's cut off Walker now outside. Neal's got it. Back outside now, here comes Fru. Fru in the lane, he'll take the shot, balls up, no good. 17 seconds left. They're gonna put uh, Schmelzer on the line, I think. But that's only their sixth foul, I believe. So they're okay. gonna have to foul again. Okay. And you don't want Lyle to be the one that's fouling. No. Because he's your legitimate three-point shooter out there. He can't foul here. Hasn't had many openings. Uh, Has not had to shoot, open, no. to shoot threes, but you know you had to figure that uh, and here Fairfield comes, Union had him circled. Here comes the designated fouler into the game right here. <laughs> All right, okay. And Fru's going to take a seat, and number three, Brady Kaufman comes down. All right. Try to get the steal if they get it inbounds foul. Working it outside. And that's where they need to foul that's right Hera. there. Hera, and they that's, yeah, and they get it, they get him. Let's see, who was that on the, I think that was Neil with a foul. Right. So that's gonna put Hera on the line. We may have his percentage, I think. Well, Hera is a 55% free throw shooter on the season. 50-50 chance here. So, not the worst, not the worst guy to foul. Boy, one, and it's still a one possession game. Two, and it's a two possession game, pretty tough. Hera. And that's a brick. He missed the back. Bigger nice life. job. Are they going to call timeout or left. are they going to play? Let's see. They're Ten gonna, seconds. They're going to play. Walker's got the basketball. Walker down the lane. Walker's going to take the shot off the rim. No good. That's going to do it. Harris got the rebound. Jaden Walker had a pretty good look, I'd say. I, I would have pulled the trigger on that one. He drove down to the block, got a look, let it go, went off the back of the rim, no good. And back to the line, Ted Harrell. 
Here. That was on Lyle, so he just fouled out of the game. Just 1.9 seconds left. Lyle's out of the game, as you said. But 1.9 seconds left. And Hera, I don't know if it makes any difference if he gets one or not. They had a timeout left. I'm always interested to see if the coaches are just going to let them play or they're going to call a timeout. So Coach McLaughlin just let them go. And if you're Hera... I mean, even a miss isn't that bad here with 1.9 left. But he got that one this time. Three-point lead. He gets this one, and it's over. Fairfield Union will advance. Second shot now for Hera. Balls up and good. Ball game. Uh, 1.9 seconds, you need four points, pretty tough. Uh, not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's got a four-point play well, in their no, playbook. Well, no, and, they you know, track don't. Coach Schaefer's going to say, let them do whatever they want, we win. Yeah, I mean. Do you, not foul. I mean, you just let them go. You, you let them do whatever they want to do. Just stay out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> don't touch anybody. Yeah. Don't touch anyone. Let them get down and get their points. Definitely. So it looks like uh, Fairfield Union has won the regional semifinal. And as a prize for their victory today, they uh, they get to play Bishop Reedy, the number one <laughs> team in the state. Yeah. Oh. That's going to be a – It's like we said, anybody that won, whoever won, they're, they're going to have their hands full Saturday. That's for sure. One point nine. I mean, even, I mean, this is a catch and throw, but you, you know, like I said, nobody's got a four point play in their playbook. You just don't have it. And you're just like, stay away from them, don't touch them. <laughs> let them, guys, let them go. Darden with the basketball. He'll let it go. Ball's up and no good. Ball game. Fairfield Union 37. Valley 33. 37 33. The Falcons will return for the regional final. They'll take on Bishop Reedy. Tri-Valley is knocked out. Both MVL teams falling here today. A little disappointing, but a great effort by both teams. Final score one more time. We're going to take a break and then wrap up some of the uh, numbers here. Back with more, but uh, it is Fairfield Union 37, Tri-Valley 33. We'll take a break. Back with more right after this. Located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their Patrons Buckeye Mutual policy. Call today at 638 36 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. I'm not buying till I check down for most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you will always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford online at DoanFord.com. Do you really think that an insurance company who promises quotes in a few minutes has your best interest in mind? Do they really know you and what coverages you need? Hi, this is John Valentine with Valentine Insurance. We take time to learn about you and your insurance needs so you can feel comfortable that you're receiving the right coverages at the best possible prices. Find us on Facebook, stop by our office, or give us a call at 994-1776. Valentine Insurance, a partner you can depend on. I was sitting in my car and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. Then on the radio I heard of West 40 by pay here. Where for a little money down and a little each week. I could have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. 
So I walked in the door and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. Was 40 by pay here will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of a guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there. Some things in life are just automatic, like me, State Farm Agent Alan Hunter, offering great neighbor service plus surprisingly great rates on auto insurance. If you were to contact us right now, you'd find you could have some of those surprisingly great rates and good neighbor service right away, as in automatically. Give me or my staff, Austin, Minley, Lori, or Kelly, a call today. 740-439-5385. We think you'll be automatically happy you did. Like a good Back at the Convo in Athens, a disappointing end to the night as Tri-Valley had the lead late, but they couldn't hold on. Uh, Got to give a lot of credit to Fairfield Union. They come away with a 37-33 victory to advance to the regional final. So congratulations to the Falcons, uh, but this was not an easy game for Fairfield Union to win. Tough basketball game, physical basketball game all the way. Uh, just late in the game you got to make some plays and they just made more plays at the end the big three-point play there by schmelzer in the lane that was huge for fairfield union a couple missed free throws and by tri valley missed free throws there from tri valley that was just kind of spelled the end of them um just wrapping up the scoring here for tri valley jack winland with one Jaden walker with four terrell darden with 24 eric neal with one max lyle with three uh, for the victorious Fairfield Union Falcons. Brennan Rolls with three. Isaac Schmelzer with two. Ted Hara with six. Cole Johnson with two. Caleb Redding with six. Caleb Schmelzer with 11. And Ronnie Rowley had seven. Their total of 37. Um, just looking here at the shooting percentages. Fairfield Union for the game. 12 of 25. That's 48%. Uh, two of five from the three-point line. 40%. Uh, Tri-Valley, 10 of 34. I mean, they got more shots, but they just couldn't make any of them. 29.4%, uh, 3 for 11 from the three-point line at 27%. 10 of 16 from the free-throw line at 62.5%. Fairfield Union was 11 of 13 from the free-throw line, 84.6%. Um, rebounding, uh, Fairfield Union, 22 defensive rebound. Only three offensive, though, so 25 total rebounds. Uh, and then for Tri-Valley, they had five offensive rebounds, 11 defensive for 16 total rebounds in the turnover department. Uh, Fairfield Union with 15, Tri-Valley with only four. Well, I'll tell you something. And the biggest stat, 37-33. That's yeah, the um, and I'll tell you, the Scotties had it. They had a 33-30 lead. Last seven points of the game go to the Falcons. Uh, so uh, they hit some clutch shots. Uh, I'll tell you what that – that three-point play by uh, Caleb Schmelzer down yep. in the lane, that was, that was big. That was the and, big and point couple, of the game. A couple of missed free throws uh, by the Scotties hurt them a little bit, but, you know, you can't fault the effort. Uh, hats off to Terrell Darden, 24 points. Yes. Uh, he played his heart out. Out of the 33, and he'll yeah. be back. <laughs> yeah, he will. He's, he's, a, he's definitely a good one. But, uh, hey, one more time, do uh, you got that uh, sponsor list? Want to uh, see if we can uh, go ahead and thank our sponsors just one more time. Uh, got it on I know somewhere. I know you got it there. Shuffle those papers around. Hey, there we go. Hey, Shuffle. There you, you All right, here it. we go. Mm-hmm. Our sponsor is tonight's broadcast, Doan Ford, a patron's Buckeye Mutual Insurance, Valentine Insurance, Park National Bank, West 40 Auto Sales, WB Green Insurance, Federal Elite, Federal Elite Heating and Cooling. I couldn't spit that one out. And Allen Hunter State Farm. Our fine sponsors for our second game broadcast tonight here at the Convo in Athens. All right, well, tough night for the MVL as both teams in the league get knocked out. Maysville gets knocked out in uh, game number one against top-ranked Bishop Reedy. And here in game two tonight, uh, Tri-Valley is knocked out by the um, 
Fairfield Union Falcons. Final score here uh, one more time, 37-33, Fairfield Union with the win. Hey, want to thank uh, Aaron Sprague with uh, the highlights package. Uh, Aaron's with Storied Rivals. I uh, want to thank Dave Hilliard Color, uh, Brett Klein, our director, Christian Mills, our floor cameraman, and Jaron Aber, our top cameraman. I'm Bill Kassler. Final score one more time. It is Fairfield Union 37, Tri-Valley 33. For ABC Sports, I'm Bill Kassler. God bless. Have a great rest of your night. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports.